Shalom, and welcome to Seek It Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Leviticus chapters 9 and 10. Chapter 9 has 24 verses. Beginning in verse 1, we see here, uh, it mentions on the eighth day in both versions. So my question is, is this the same eighth day known as Shemini Atzeret in Hebrew? or the eighth day feast, which is uh, one of the Moedim described in Leviticus 23. We're going to see that later. But is this what it's talking about? Because there's no such thing as an eighth day in a week since there is only seven days. There are seven days, so what is the eighth day? So that's an interesting uh, thing to note. Verse 3, uh, the difference here is the elders of Israel versus the children of Israel. So I'd say that's a big difference because elders obviously are older children. People think of uh, school-age children, youths. Verse 4, fine flour mingled versus meat offering. So this is a big difference in terms of the modern vernacular. But when you understand in Scripture, when, when we talk about meat offerings, that's talking about things including bread, not just meat per se, but non-meat <laughs> items, plant-based items like fine flour. Verse 6, uh, from the word spoken, okay. Yah has spoken, do, and the glory of Yah shall appear among you. And then uh, we see in the Maz it says, Yah commanded that you should do. So he's spoken it here, but it, it says that he's commanded it in the Mass. Uh, and the glory of Yah shall appear unto you. Uh, so I think the biggest difference is uh, spoken versus commanded. Uh, verse 7, and for your house, atonement for yourself and for your house versus for the people. For the people. So it's not just the house of Moses, or, or Aaron in this case. It's all the people, for the people of Israel. It's all inclusive. That's a big difference. Uh, Moshe has been omitted right at the end, as Yah commanded Moshe, not just commanded uh, in general. Because if you take out Moshe, if you say, okay, this command uh, to make atonement for them as Yah commanded Moshe, that's explicitly, you know, specific to Moses. On the other hand, when you see it, when you read it as, as Yah commanded, that's just to everybody. But that's not the case here. It's not a general term. It's not being vague. In fact, Yah is being specific. It is to Moshe that he commanded this. And he uh, also, uh, Moshe in turn, told this instruction to Aaron. Okay. Verse uh, 8, which for himself has been added in the Mass. And then we see in verse 9, notice the word poured is in both versions, both translations. Sprinkled is rarely translated as such in the Sept. Usually it's poured, but we might see one uh, coming up in the future. Verse 12, poured again versus sprinkled. So here we see the, the normal uh, difference, the continuous difference that we're used to seeing, the blood being poured out versus sprinkled in the mass, which it almost 90% of the time is sprinkled, maybe more than that. And then we just saw just a few verses earlier that it does say poured, the blood was poured out. So why all the discrepancies except for that instance? Verse 13, put versus burnt. So uh, the, the offering cannot be burnt yet, as it says in the Mass, because you cannot wash what has been consumed in fire, as we will see in the preceding verse. You wash the belly and the feet. How can you wash it if it's burned? You can't. Uh and it says, with water, 
uh, that has been omitted from the MAS. So it could be washed with anything. In this case, it is water, according to the SEPT. I know it just should be common sense, but because people nowadays can insert their own interpretation, they'll say, oh, maybe they washed it with dust. Maybe they washed it with soap. Maybe they washed it with blood. Maybe <laughs> wash it with fire. I don't know. People make up all these different things. They can insert their own doctrine. But the important thing to note is it is water. That's the fact. Verse 15, purified it uh, versus offered it. So uh, the goat of the sin offering was killed and was purified. Um, moving on to verse 19. Notice call on the liver. Call on the liver uh, is the same in both for the first time. Usually it doesn't say call on the liver in both. And then we see in verse 21, separated versus waived. That's a common difference, a continuous difference. Choice offering again versus wave offering. And then in verse 22, hands versus hand. Uh, Aaron lifting up his hands. Now in verse 24, we see that this verse proves that the sept was correct in translating the terms as offer versus burn uh, when we read it earlier in 13 where they put it on the offering, not burning it because it was this fire from Yah that consumed the fire and not Moses or anyone else burning it on their own. Uh, this offering does not equal burning. Rather, offering in this narrative means to put, uh, to place it to be burned. So let's read it, verse 24, and now let's first read it in the Maz just so we can see the difference. And there came a fire out from before Yah and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat. When all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. This uh, come, brings into mind the, the account of Elijah and uh, that fire coming from heaven. So uh, this is not norm a normal fire. It's not one where the, uh, a human being would take it and then place it there. It's, it's in fact, a divine fire. It came out from before Yah. So this is his fire. And this is a fire that should continue to burn. It, it should not be uh, let to be extinguished. So uh, that's in the Maz. Let's read it in the Sept. And fire came forth from Yah and devoured the offerings on the altar, both the whole burn offerings and the fat. And all the people saw and were amazed and fell upon their faces. So notice, they didn't shout. They were amazed. Maybe they did shout, but the more important thing is the impression that was made on them, they were amazed. Because if you shout, that could mean many different things. That could mean maybe you're afraid or angry or so many reasons to shout. But they were amazed. And uh, so both versions, in fact, the Maz and the Sept, support that the uh, offering is a better uh, uh, translation of the word. So let's just read uh, that part that is different. It says here, devoured the offerings on the altar versus consumed upon the altar, the burnt offering. So see, it hasn't been burnt yet, although it's described as the whole burnt offerings because it's to be burned. But in the mass, it's already burned. If we're going by the narrative here, where it says that uh, it was burned in verse 13. Right? He burnt them. So he burnt them. How can they be burned twice? That's going to be like ash. You're going to burn ash? So that's why I have to uh, clarify this. This is a significant difference. Uh, a very big difference. Okay. So moving on. 
Welcome back. Leviticus chapter 10 has 20 verses. Verse 3, we see a sig diff uh, where it says that Aaron was pricked. Uh, let's read the context. Moshe said to Aaron, uh, oh, this is regarding his sons, Nadab, Anadab, and Abihu, who uh, took each a censer and, and they offered a strange fire before Yah which Yah did not command them. That was against his specific commands. They didn't follow the guidelines and fire came forth from Yah, uh, similar to just what we read of in the previous chapter. And they died before Yah. So they became like a sacrifice in a way. Um, and then Moshe said to Aaron, this is, the, this is the thing which Yah spoke saying, I will be set apart, sanctified uh, among them that draw near to me. And I will be glorified in the whole congregation. Okay, you're, you're going to honor him by obeying him, for one thing. And Aaron was pricked, and then it says in his heart. So uh, I'm not sure if that's really what it means, but he was pricked, maybe emotionally. There's many different ways to uh, interpret that. But in the Maz, it says here, I will be glorified. And, and Aaron held his peace. Okay, uh, that means he won't speak at all? Because if he starts speaking, then you know that that's a wrong translation. Um, so let's move on to the next verse. Okay, welcome back. We're talking about the death of the sons of Aharon. Now, uh, you'll notice I spelled his name that way. Well, that's because that's actually the name. That's the way his name is spelled in Hebrew. Uh, it's like saying Abram and only calling him Abram. But his name was, in fact, changed to Abraham or Avraham. And same with Sarah. So you're not going to keep saying Aaron as if it's only one A. There's actually an H and an A. So that's a important distinction because I believe when there's an H inserted in someone's name and, and usually a ha, that's, there's, a, there's a great difference. And I think that has to do with Elohim. And his name being uh, sort of inserted in somebody's identity in their name uh, could be ownership. There's a lot of things about that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, verse six, you shall not bury your heads. So this is in response to uh, the death of Aaron's sons, uh, Nadab and Abihu, and then Moshe said to Aaron and Eleazar and Ithamar, his remaining sons, you shall not make bare your heads. Uh, Versus, you shall not uncover, uh, uncover not your heads. So this could mean not to shave your heads, uh, most likely, because this was an ancient custom that was done uh, for mourning the dead. It's a sign of mourning and grieving. Just uh, look at Job, where Job's response to his children being uh, killed was shaving his head and, and mourning for them. And as well in Indian culture, uh, from India, people from India, uh, I believe might be Hindus, I'm not 100% sure, but they also shave their head to mourn their dead. So this is a practice that has been done for a long time but it sounds like uh let's just read the rest of the verse before i i move on to this it says here you shall not tear your garments that you die not and there should be wrath on all the congregation but your brethren all the house of israel shall lament for the burning the fire uh, that burned these uh, two sons of Er, Aharon, with which they were burnt by Yah. So uh, if you read it in the Mass, it says, the whole house of Israel uh, bewailed the burning which Yah has kindled. Uh, so you can see there's a little bit of a difference. It's saying roughly the same uh, rationale that they should lament, but uh, it's for the burning, yes, with which they were burnt. So the fire, they should lament because of the fire. 
So how do I make, how do we make sense of this? Uh, so it sounds like they are to mourn. It says lament. So indeed you should lament, but not because of the rebelliousness of these two sons of Aaron, Aharon, but because Yah had to punish them. That's why they should mourn. It wasn't easy. I mean, it's never easy for a parent to discipline their child. Um, but in this case, you know, these two sons were, they were cut off from this, the, from the earth. Yah had to punish them. That they are correctly, the people should be correctly on Yah's side and are sorry for his loss. Yah's loss. Why was it his loss? Well, he created them and he did not want to destroy them. It wasn't in his heart to dis destroy them the first chance he got. He had explicit rules and those rules had to be respected. Those rules had to be followed. You don't jump into a volcano expecting to survive. Those are the laws of physics. And this is a similar law. You break it, it breaks you. So it was their own doing. So we should not, uh, Nadab and Abiyu, they did not respect the law of Yah that was put in place to kill them. No, to protect them. It was put in place to protect them. And we do not mourn. Similarly, we do not mourn for someone who touches a stove and then burn themselves. We don't mourn. We don't, we're not sorry for them. We say, why did you do that? That's foolish. Why did you not respect the, the heat element? No, in fact, we're sorry for the very sad situation, which could have been prevented. You, you have stories of people who uh, drink under the influence and they end up killing others and injuring themselves and sometimes even killing themselves. And so we're not sorry. I mean, we are sorry for the sad situation, which could have been prevented. We're, we're sorry because of their incompetence, for their foolishness, especially if they know better. And in this case, they should have known better. They're, they're not just anybody. They are the sons of Aaron, of Aharon, the high priest. So this is a very important uh, point to bring out that, yes, they should mourn, but don't mourn because of them. They're not mourning the loss of Nadab and Abiyu. I know it sounds rather insensitive, but that's not what's happening here. They're mourning for a different reason altogether. And I just explained it to you that it's Yah's loss and they didn't respect the law. So you, you mourn their foolishness. You mourn the sad situation that could have been prevented, especially when something could be pre prevented. It's even as sad as a situation is when you lose, when there's a loss of life. It's even more sad when it could have been prevented. It really didn't have to be that way. And that's more sad. Okay, so that's all for that verse. Verse 9, uh, when you approach the altar, okay, this is a very big omission, and I'll explain why. Uh, let's read the whole verse. This is, this is Yah speaking to Aharon. Usually, you have, usually we read Yah spoke to Moses or Moshe. But no, this is Yah speaking to Aaron this time. You shall not drink wine or strong drink. You and your sons with you. When? Whensoever you enter into the tabernacle of witness. Or when you approach the altar. So why? Why is he saying this? So you, sh so you won't die. It is a perpetual statute for generations. And the difference here is that uh, it doesn't say when you approach the altar. So maybe some people will say, oh, well, you said if we go into the tabernacle, but if we approach the altar, we could drink. But the sept is saying, no, not even when you approach the altar, because that's exactly what happened here. That's why they died. Maybe they did. Maybe they, Maybe there is something that is not uh, told to us here. If we read between the lines, why would these two sons do this if they knew better? Maybe they did know better, but... But verse 9 kind of reveals that maybe they were drunk. Why would he say don't drink wine or strong drink? Maybe because they were drinking? 
Is that a possibility? Very much so. Very much so. And I was just talking uh, just a moment ago that one of the most sad situations, a very preventable uh, incidence is drunk driving. Uh, people killed by drunk drivers. And look, behold, you read here, drink, drink wine, don't drink wine or strong drink. So not just don't get drunk, but don't even be tipsy. Don't let it, don't let there be an opportunity for, for your judgment to be impaired, even in the slightest. Let's not take any chances because look what happened. You can, you can feel that Yah is, that Yah wasn't happy about it. Our father wasn't happy that they were foolish and then he had to kill them because of their foolish actions. They didn't respect his, his uh, specific commandments, the guidelines, and that's what happens. You jump off a bridge, you will die. You jump into a volcano, you will die. I mean, they didn't respect the boundaries. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, verse 12, take the sacrifice that is left uh, of the burnt offerings of Yah, and you shall eat unleavened bread uh, by the altar. It is most holy. Uh, verses, take the meat offering. Again, that's a continuous difference that remains of the offerings of Yah made by fire and eat it without leaven beside the altar. It is, it is most holy. So I think the biggest difference is the unleavened bread part. It says, eat unleavened bread. Don't just simply eat it without leaven, because if you can eat it without, without leaven, that means you can just eat the meat or eat the offering itself. But here it's explicit that, no, you don't just eat the, the sacrifice. You eat it with unleavened bread. And we know a lot of people who are in the Messianic community or, or believe you know, in the Messiah, Yeshua is the Messiah, that the unleavened bread represents his body. That he is a, that, that's a symbol of him. Okay, moving on. Verse 13, statute. It says here, this is a statute and a statute for your sons. Uh, in the Maz, it says, because it is your due. It is your due. Wow, that's, I don't even know how to make sense of that. It is a statute versus it is your duty. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that's similar. It's similar only in the way that they should obey it, but uh, a statute is similar, you know, when you hear about uh, commandments, precepts, statutes. But then if, if you're saying that it's your due, that's it's like what you owe or it's your duty. It's not as, uh, what's the word? It's not as like set in stone. Like these are the guidelines. It's not like a guideline. It's more like you owe me this. You know, it's not like a continuous perpetual thing that is expected of you and should be continued. It's just your due, your duty. Maybe that's, maybe duty would be a better way to put it. So that's verse 13. And I'd say that's a major difference. Uh, verse 14, the whole verse is a big difference, especially the holy place versus a clean place. So let's look at this. The mas, the wave, uh, and the wave breast and heave shoulder, uh, you shall eat in a clean place versus uh, eat the breast of separation, the shoulder of the choice offering in the holy place. So it's not just any regular or clean place. It is the holy place. You and your sons and your house with you. Oh, hold on. You're you and your sons and your daughters with you versus your house uh, for your due, your, your, your duty and your son's duty, which are given out of the sacrifices uh, for it has been given as an ordinance. See, it's an ordinance. Uh, I think it's getting more and more clear that it's a statute. It's an ordinance. It's a, it's like a guideline. It's, it's, it's something they should be following almost a law. It's not an, it's not saying it's a law here, but it's very close to that versus just saying it's their due. And I don't think that's a good translation of what it really means. 
out of the sacrifices of peace offerings uh, of the children of Israel. And, and that's the same in both. Moving on, 15, uh, the word daughters has been omitted. Your sons and your daughters with you. So uh, this whole verse differs greatly too. So let's read it. Uh, the heave shoulder, the wave breast, shall they bring with offerings made by fire of the fat. Uh, a wave offering before Yah shall be yours and your sons with you by a statute forever, as Yah commanded, has commanded. Uh, versus uh, they shall bring the shoulder. Okay, I think it's just the continuous differences we keep noticing to separate for a separation. Okay, that's that's fine. But then it says perpetual ordinance. Okay, now that's the same as statue forever. Uh, daughters, as Yah commanded Moshe. So I think the other difference is that it was commanded to who? To Moshe. And he's left out again, unfortunately. Verse 16, consumed by fire versus burnt. Uh, that's not a huge difference. I think it's more just terminology. And then verse 17, this verse in both versions contradict uh, the Maz in verse 14. Uh, so let's read it. Wherefore, or why have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy place? Why did you not eat the sin offering in the holy place? Because it is most holy. He has given you this to eat. Uh, referring to Yah. You might that you might take away the sin of the congregation and make atonement for them before Yah. And the, the big difference here in this verse is uh, uh, right here. Yah has given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation. So in the Mazi saying, okay, this, this sin offering you're supposed to eat, it's for you in order for you to bear the sins of the congregation to like a burden for Aaron, for Aharon. Okay, uh, do you understand how heavy that is? But look at the sep. Let's see, is it still heavy? You've, you've, you've been given this to eat, the offering that you might take away, actually taking away the sin of the congregation. Not that he's the Messiah, but but he's a, a type of, because this is a uh, kind of a foreshadowing of, Yehoshua, who is our high priest forever, because he does take away the sin of the world, not just our congregation. See, Aaron is taking away the sin of just the children of Israel, but Yehoshua took away the sin of all of humanity. You see the, you see how this lines up with what Yeshua came to do. Whereas here, yeah, he did he did bear the iniquity. He he bore our sins, but it's one thing to bear the sins, but it's another thing to be able to take away the sin, to purge it out. But in order to take away the sin, you have to bear it first. I'm talking about what Yeshua did, but in this verse, it's not saying that it's saying he will take away the sin of the congregation uh, by Get, uh, having this uh, offering for him to eat. That's the purpose it serves. Okay. Uh, verse 19. Let me see here. Uh, Aaron said to Moshe, Aharon, behold this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yah, and such things have befallen me. Okay, so the, his two sons died. If I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of Yah? Will he, will he have accepted uh, me doing this? Um, and then when Moshe heard, he was happy or content. Uh, let's read what the Sept says. It, it's a little more clear here. Aharon spoke to Moshe saying, If they have brought near today their sin offerings. So again, the big difference is if. So in the Maz, they, they brought the sin offering, but no, it's he's saying if they have brought and their whole burnt offerings before Yah. And so I guess the people didn't bring the offering, but it does it sounds like they did. 
because uh, Mo- Moses is asking Aaron, why didn't you eat it? So we can't eat something that has been brought. So it has been brought. Um, and these events have happened to me. So they, they happened. And I should eat today of the sin offerings. Would it be pleasing to you? And Moshe heard, and it pleased him. So how to make sense of this verse? Aaron, Aaron seems to use logic and common sense. And why I say this is because is it proper decorum for him to do this? Knowing that the people, well, the people know, they're very aware that he just lost two of his sons. They were killed through their uh, carelessness and not following the rules. So they know they know that he's not in a good place emotionally. He's, this isn't a normal day for him. And should should be given an excuse? Should should Aaron be given an excuse to be able to have a day of bereavement, an exception for him to not take part of this offering? So not only was he most likely sad, but his household was also shamed by the actions of his two sons that died, Nadab and Abihu. So it sounds like Aaron... Aharon is asking for a uh, an exception, you know, a day of bereavement. He's just not. A lot of people, when when they're going through loss and depression, they they have a loss of appetite. They just don't feel like eating. And I think this is what's happening to Aaron here. Uh, so, but he's he's framing it in a different way. That would y'all be pleased? Because, like, say I eat of this offering. Okay, I'm Aaron right now. I'm just role playing. If I eat of this Moses and, you know, I'm not, I'm out of sorts today. I'm, this is, I'm just not feeling it. And I'm going to eat this. And Yah knows my heart. He knows, you know, it's just not something, there's something there that it's just, it's weighing heavy on me. You know, my two sons died today. So he, maybe he wants to just eat it with a clear conscience and just know that, you know, emotionally he's right. Like he's not bearing any uh, emotional baggage or just there's nothing preventing him from doing his job. I mean, even, you know, people in a lot of professions, they have a day of bereavement because they can't perform normally. So maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe Aaron just cannot perform to his normal uh, capacity in light of what happened to his sons. And and that makes perfect sense. So uh, that's all for... Uh, Leviticus chapters 9 and 10. Uh, Next chapter 11 is going to be its own video. It's a very special one talking about uh, the clean and unclean meats. It's going to be very interesting because this is something I've known about for uh, at least 20 years, but there's still things to learn about it, surprisingly. And I just discovered some new things just recently about it. Uh, So stay tuned for that. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. May our Father bless you and make your way prosperous. You have just watched Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Shalom.